Hello, welcome to this episode of Rich Insights. I'm Don Rich, Head of Investments for Esoteric Capital Markets. Today's topic is on the steepening yield curves. Now, yield curves in the U.S. and in Europe are steepening, but I'm going to focus on the U.S. because they're uh, steepening uh, much more than, than what we're seeing in Europe. All right, so what does it mean when a yield curve steepens? Well, you know, it could be good news. Right, we'll walk through that. Could be bad news. Some people even believe it could be really bad news, right? So, what's going on here? Let's go to the charts here so we can see what's going on. You know, on this chart uh, here, we have the yield curve at three different times, right? This is the blue line is the yield curve today. The orange line or brown line here is the yield curve at the end of last month, right? At the end of May. So we got June 7th versus end of May, and then of course the start of the year in the green line, the yield curve at the start of the year. Now obviously rates have come down substantially for all maturity since the start of the year, right? That doesn't surprise anyone. So really what we want to focus on here is the difference between the brown line and the blue line. You can see the short end of the curve, they're about identical, all right? So short rates are the same today as they were in the last month. But longer rates have increased uh, significantly, right? Let's look here at the end. At 30 years, we went from, let's call it 95 basis points to 120 basis points, right? So 30-year interest rates have increased about 25 bips, right, in just the past few days. 10-year interest rates, you can see here, 65 to 88 basis points. So a little over 20 basis points. So long rates in the U.S. are increasing 20 plus basis points. Okay, what does that tell us? That's, that, that's what's giving rise uh, to the yield cur curve deepening. Well, when long-term rates go higher, it's generally believed that it's either due to increased inflation expectations or increased growth prospects. All right, so obviously, if the market thinks we're, we're going to grow faster, now I'm talking about GDP here, right? The U.S. economy growing faster. If the, if the market thinks the U.S. economy is growing faster, then that would be very good news. Right? The inflation, yeah, if we're expected to get some inflation, uh, well, that's less good news. But our inflation is so low right now, that might not be terrible either. All right, so let's look at some evidence uh, on, on both of those fronts here. Here we have, again, the, the yield curve slope. We were looking at the entire yield curve before. This is just a slope. Here we're looking at the twos versus ten. Two year versus ten year. And again, you can see we've been steepening throughout the year, and particularly here recently in the last week. Now, the, the first thing I would note is this doesn't necessarily mean we're out of the woods. So I highlighted a couple dates back from the end of 2016, you can see the yield, the uh, um, slope was, was negative. So at the end of 2006, we, we uh, had a negative slope or downward sloping yield curve. And then at the 1st of January 2008, the yield curve was much steeper. But obviously, in January 2008, we weren't out of the woods, right? Not, not even in January 2009. So the fact that we've steepened, you know, oftentimes we get these very flat to inverted yield curves 12 to 18 months before a recession. So again, the fact that we're steepening, we can't immediately conclude it's good news because in the past it certainly uh, has not been. But nevertheless, it's steepened significantly. All right, so this is twos versus tens. Some people also like to look at three month versus 10 year. So again, the previous chart was two year versus 10 year. This is three month versus 10 year. In the, the, you know, the same basic story here. All right. So, you know, again, what's going on is, is, is short rates are being held constant, right? Let's call it below two years are being held fixed. That's because of the Fed, right? The Fed is repressing um, interest rates right now. So they're keeping short rates low while longer term rates go up. Now, if it was due to increased growth prospects, right? If it was good news. If the yield curve was steepening uh, for good news, let's see if we can find some numbers uh, to support that. Most of the macroeconomic data uh, do not seem to support it. Right? We got a little bit better um, uh, labor market numbers, right? Non-farm payroll numbers on, on, on Friday of last week than the market was expecting, but they were still 
1929 depression level numbers. They were still terrible, even if even though they were a little bit better. So it's hard to believe the market was getting too excited about that. Uh, let, let's take a look here and see what's, what's being priced in. Here we're looking at central bank uh, interest rate hikes or cuts that are being priced in for the next year. And you can see in the U.S., there's no no uh, hikes being priced in. And in fact, throughout the, the, the world, throughout the world, there's essentially no hikes being priced in. New Zealand has almost one interest rate cut left to make. All right. Some of the central banks are a little slower to provide the stimulus than other ones. So New Zealand still has one cut to make, but nobody's pricing in interest rate hikes. So if the growth prospects were picking up, wouldn't you think somebody somewhere uh, um, would be pricing in this, this growth? In other words, it would allow these central banks to take, take uh, back uh, some of these uh, um, emergency liquidity provisions. So we're just not seeing any evidence of, of that uh, at all. Uh, now, what about inflation? What about inflation? Well, let's go, let's actually go to the market. Let's, uh, you know, we have a tips market in the U.S. and they, we do it other places throughout the world. So we can see what the market's pricing in for inflation. Most recently, uh, headline inflation in the U.S. has been 30 basis points, you can see. Over the next five years, it's expected to be just shy of one percent all right so inflation is expected to increase so i guess there's some credence behind the suggestion that these curves are steepening due to inflation concerns are we really getting excited about one percent inflation remember two percent is our target two percent is a target so there's not a whole lot of evidence to say it's growth related or it's inflation related that's driving the steeper yield curve. Again, there's more evidence uh, behind the inflation story, but 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 not a whole lot. What else is going on here? I think I think we got a bigger issue uh, going on here, right? We've just had debt, sovereign debt globally, increasing at a staggering speed, right? All these massive stimulus programs, not only in the U.S. outside of the U.S., and these are fiscal stimulus pro programs and their monetary stimulus programs, and all this debt, all this leverage is starting to catch up with us. And the timing of these steeper yield curves uh, was kind of interesting. The timing came right after the ECB announced a massive increase uh, to their quantitative easing, to their bond buying uh, plan. So again, more debt, more debt. So it looks like maybe the ECB's action were actually the tipping point. So we're really talking about credit risk here, right? Or default risk. Uh, is, is, is what the market's getting excited about, uh, perhaps. So whether it's inflation or whether it's sovereign credit risk, it really doesn't matter. The end result is what, what, what the market's worried about right now is that we could be talking about that dreaded word we haven't heard since the 1970s, right? Stagflation. Stagflation. Where we have some inflation with poor growth, Right? some inflation or high inflation with poor growth. Now, again, the catalyst in the 1970s for the stagflation was the oil crisis, right? We had the oil embargo. We, 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 we had uh, uh, some, some price fixing going on and so forth. So it was an oil crisis. It was an energy crisis in, in the 70s. This time, if we get stagflation, it looks like the catalyst is going to be just a staggering amount of sovereign debt. Now, remember, it's not only the sovereigns. In the last few years, U.S., China, right, a number of countries have, have been taking on a huge amount of debt. So the sovereign debt was building, and then, of course, it exploded due to the stimulus packages in response to the coronavirus. But, but, we also were carrying a record amount of corporate debt. It's actually the corporate debt that worries me the most right now. But again, the bottom line is none of this uh, uh, really matters, right? The end result would be some, some type of stagflation, some type of stagflation, whether, whether the inflation comes because of, of uh, more sovereign risk, right? More default risk, or whether it actually comes from inflation. We still are pairing it with slow growth, and that's not a, a, a good outcome. So we're very early into these uh, steeper yield curves. So we'll have to give it some time. We'll monitor it closely, give it some time. You know, I, I, I guess, you know, what do we make of it today? Well, it doesn't seem to be good news. Is it bad news or is, is it really bad news? We don't know yet, right? But, but we'll keep track of that and, and we'll report on that uh, going forward. So 
Uh, again, that's our uh, message for today. I'm Don Rich, and you've just experienced a rich insight. I hope you've enjoyed it. May your beer be colder than the company you keep. We'll talk again soon. Thank you.